get ready because I'm going to let us go on tangents. But this is I different. live for tangents. But this is amazing because we have one hour. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you need an hour Definitely. because that otherwise you don't really like kind of lean agree. into the whole yes. actual conversation. Totally. Okay, so tangents, we're good. Um, What's the technical name? Ta tangents. Tangents. So like when you go on tangentes. a tangent. Tangentes, got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, how do you say it? Tangente. Tangente. In Mexico, we say, say, no te salgas por la tangente. No te vayas por la tangente, which is exactly what you're saying. So you were born in Mexico City, is that yes, right? Yes, Mexico City. Okay, and I read somewhere that you speak like f at least four languages. I try to, but not fluent. Can you yeah. sample Because I don't all practice. Four? For example, P Portuguese, I, I speak well because my mom is from Brazil. Uh, French, because I went to a French school, but I need to be in, in Paris for at least two weeks to like pick it up again. And then uh, I think that's it. So you went to French school when? Like, how old were you? Oh, uh, all my life. When I was a little kid, uh, since uh, second grade of kindergarten. <laughs> Maybe not. From ki no, there, Wait, there second are, grade of kindergarten. Exactly. There are no grades in kindergarten, right? right. Kindergarten well, in Mexico, there are. No, they're not. Uh, no, kindergarten, kindergarten is the grade. Thank you. Yes. And then first grade. Yeah. You are, no, but wait. <laughs> But let me explain to you how grades go in Mexico. So yes, yes, I'm sorry. You have only one grade in kindergarten. Okay. But then you have, we call it primary school, which is elementary here. And then you have three years of secundaria, which is what? High school? Probably. Uh, and then three years of preparatoria. Oh, so then... And then you go to college. Secundaria is probably middle school. Then. Middle school, exactly. And then okay. high school, then three years of high, uh, middle school, then three years of high school, and then you go to college, right? And you did all of that in French? Uh, no, I was because the school had the French section and the Mexican section. So French section, it's everything on French. Like every single subject, it's uh, it's uh, ese in parte. <laughs> It's, it's so it's like you can only speak French. in French. Like exactly. the teachers are all exactly. doing their lessons. They're, in they're actually from, from from France, from Paris. That's it. And then the Mexican version, all of the other subjects are in Spanish, but you have a French class. Okay. Yes. Now I look back, and it it would have been better for me to be in the French. I think I would have liked more to be on the French section. It would have been harder, but could you imagine your French today? But it's probably good if you're it saying would, all you uh, need to do is go back for two weeks to Paris, uh, and boom, it's yours again. Je ne sais pas. Well, that sounds good to me, but I bet you know Merci a little more beaucoup. than that. Oui, un petit peu. Did you ever live in Paris? Never. So when you say go back to Paris, you just mean visit? Just mean visit, yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> because yeah, we're very privileged. Right, <laughs> okay. right. <laughs> so we, so, were, this is so we were having a conversation coming yes, in. Okay. That was interesting. Okay. Can we go back to that? Yeah, definitely. What okay. was it? So when, I, I when you came in, you came in, I was in the studio yeah. and you came in and... Fancy studio, by the way. Kara. Amazing studio. I love it. And you're telling me it's a fancy studio, it but is. it's not because of me that we're here. It's no, it is. It's a fabulous manager. Owned by and my manager. Publicist. Yes. He was my, look, at, look at him. He, he, all, he's like, yeah, you're here. It's my studio. So what, bitches? So I, I told it, him, Ray. I told Ray. Oh my God, please let's turn off the phones because he's so, so disrespectful, Kara. Come on. I mean, all right. <laughs> okay, so for those of us watching. That was my phone. You can see. <laughs> okay. But now oh, they're watching. Know. Oh my God. Um, uh, so Ray, thank you again for the use of the studio. This is huge. You, and you know, Ray works for Zero Gravity, which are one of the producers of Ozark, the show. Oh, so nice. I'm in the middle of season two of Ozark. Nice. Um, season one was amazing, and I couldn't believe I didn't even know season two was about to come out. And then suddenly, like, I'm, I hear it that you. it's out like a week yeah. later. And I was like, oh, amazing. So I'm a few episodes in now. So very good. Are you into Ozark? <laughs> Totally. He they have to. Uh, yeah, they have to. It's, it's his job. Do you yeah. watch Ozark? I I know, and I want to, and I want to watch it. I heard, I heard it's so good. Even King LeBron James tweeted about Ozark. So oh, yeah? obviously, we're doing something wrong by not watching it. It's a good show, yeah, and you know, it's not so easy to make a good show, it's but not. it's really. Um, it's it's clever and it keeps you keeps your attention and you want to get to the next thing. There are nice. a lot of twists in it. It's interesting. Sounds familiar. Jason Bateman is good. Hmm. Well, Laura Jason is amazing. Good. And the girl from I know I'm talking to the, you about the girl you're from the Red it. Dragon tattoo. No, you're <laughs> you're not going to see that. No, I don't know. Is that is no? The, I'm just I'm kidding. Th no, the girl the girl from who she was in the Americans. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, oh, you know that our, our showrunner, Jenny Ehrman, she's a huge fan of the Americans. Wait, who? Jenny she, Ehrman, oh, is our he? showrunner. You have no idea the level of fan of the Americans. Like, then we I were, need to talk to her. We were at I'm, the Golden Globes. Yeah. We were nominated. She bailed on us when she saw the Americans. Okay, bye, guys. Boom, and went and fan all over the Americans and asked for pictures and whatever. We're like, okay, Jenny, we, we're your show. Like, we understand you love them, but love us more, please. 
But the Americans is yeah, so I know. good. I feel I her. Know, I know. It's so good. But there I was know. a girl in Ozark who was also in the Americans just for a few seasons. What's her name? Or do she you played know? Kim in the Americans. She's the blonde, like kind of curly hair. She was Kim. Who's working for Jason Bateman. Hey, let's IMDB her right now. Yes. Julia yes. Garner. Yes. She's really talented. Um, so, yeah, good show. Um, do you watch TV? Uh, uh, I want to show my family, but I have this little notification, horrible notification. Hold on. That's new. I just got that too. Oh, oh hold on. Let me see this. This is your fam? Yeah. All right. So tell me about your family. We'll uh, talk about the TV best. later. My son is turning four today. Okay, I can see it again. <laughs> He's turning four today. Yeah. And how old is your daughter? Six. Okay. She's and... turning seven by the end of the month. So apparently my wife and I got get busy in January around. That's your December, time. December, January, yeah. Um, can I take a picture of the family so yes, that I can, can put that up I can so that anybody can listening can? Yes. Okay, that would be great. Yes. All right, text it to me. Yes, I will. Um, we'll, we'll exchange numbers after. Yes, of course. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> not on the mics. Obviously. All right, so back to TV. Yeah. You do or you do not watch TV? I don't. I do. But I, I don't know. That's Since I became a dad, my priority has been, you know, to be a dad. And, and when I was single, even with, when I was married with my wife without kids, we did like the binge watching and let's get together and watch what's a new show. We were into Grey's Anatomy, the both of us. And but then you be, then you become a dad, and it's like everything. The shifts. octonauts, and you know, the, you, yeah, yeah. I watch a lot of TV. Yeah, but it's it's a certain. It's a different level. Yes, yeah, a different level of TV. A different definitely. genre. Let's uh-huh. say. Yeah. So, um, so you're busy all the time, and you live. Here and in Mexico City, I've no, read that. Is that and that's wrong. Right? I've been on and off, on and off, like ten years in Los Angeles, but steady for the past five or six years. Okay, and so you like it here? Are you an LA I love person? It. I love it. What do you love about it? Everything, everything. Such as? The the safety. You know, in our countries, we have to run around in like armored cars, and we have to, you know, the, the safety's priorities, especially for my kids. But uh, I just love the how laid back California is and how amazing the people. I mean, it's just just it's very it's a very cool it's a it's a very cool city and a very cool state. Yeah, and so do your kids speak? Are they learning <laughs> both English. languages? Just English. First language is English. Yeah, it's it is. I try to stick to Spanish uh, with, inside of the house, but sometimes they look at me like, "What the hell are you saying, man? Like we're from the valley. Like we don't know what you're saying, Dad." So I have to like tell them in English because I don't think they understand me, which is wrong. I should stick to Spanish. I think you should stick yes, to Spanish. Yes, I should. I should. And, They'll and, and thank I, you later. I know. I know. And Just I don't. Both. And they can get shame both on me. You. Shame. No shame. But no. you have such a good thing that you can give I know, them. I know. I know. It's a gift. It's a gift that keeps on giving. And I'm taking that gift away from them. Plus, think about it. Shame. It's easier for them to learn it now than it will be later. Most definitely. So easy. Have you ever tried? Well, I mean, you already know all we, these I languages. was shooting a movie in Mexico the past summer, this past summer, and everybody was speaking to them in Spanish, and they 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 understood. I mean, they they knew what we were saying, but and they tried to like their little Spanglish kind of like, see, sí, vamos a la alberca, and I'm like, no. Don't say it like that. English Spanish. Yeah, don't say it like that. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. Lead me back to you You were born in Mexico City. Yeah. Your mom was Brazil. from Brazil. Uh-huh. And your dad. It's from, from Torreon. Torreon. Torreon, is a, Torreon is, a, is a city in Mexico in the north. Okay. Torreon, Coahuila. Okay. And they met where? I think they met. My mom uh, was a singer. Now she paints. And she's a composer, and, and she's amazing. But but she was a singer. She was I think she was touring with Sergio Mendes, and uh, and she came to me- she went to Mexico with Sergio Mendes and Laudir de Oliveira, which was the percussionist for Chicago for the band. And and I don't know. I think my dad was watching the show, and he was like, "Wow, I like that. I like that blondie. I'm going to marry that blondie." And he did. How did he manage that? Well, because he has a lot of personality. I don't know. I think I think he just com- committed to it and, and and he did it. What's he like? He's very cool. <laughs> he's a, he's a character. He's a real Rogelio de la Vega. He's the real Rogelio de la Vega. Oh yeah. really? Oh yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. So that's his personality. That's who we're seeing on he screen. He is very is like dad? flamboyant and extravagant and full of life. And and he enters a room and he fills a room immediately. They were like, whoa, what is that presence? And it's uh, him. <laughs> and what's your mom like? My mom is the same. I'm so actually I'm a miracle. I'm a miracle child. 
I, I could have ended uh, very bad with the psychological problems and drug problems. So the fact that I ended up well, I, I, I conquered my crazy parents. So I, I conquered. I my... know you're joking. Yes, of course. No, but they are a little bit. I'm kind of joking, but if you see a tear, it's because I'm not joking. So again, I know you're joking, yes. but it was it we, not weird, but was it what was it like having two very dynamic people? Very dynamic as with a lot of personality, right? Because I think often there's just one instead of two. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. one tends to be the more dynamic one. <clears throat> Not always. Certainly, there are many couples that are both dynamic. Yeah, yeah. But so there are two big personalities. Two big personalities, and you seem to have a big personality. Definitely, yeah. But uh, but it was it was uh, it was it was kind of difficult because then they, they divorced when I was very young, maybe four years old or five years old. They divorced, and then my dad met this this great uh, girl that I like very much, uh, very much, Tony from New York, and she already had three daughters. And then she and my dad had my my brother Jorge and my sister Alexia, so I so we so it was like a big family big. on the side of my father. On my mom, I was the only child. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So, and who did you live with? With my mom until I was probably twelve or thirteen, and then I started to identify more with my dad. I, I wanted to be more with, with him, and and because of course I was identifying more with him as a man, no men to men. But also he he had um, you know he had money so so and, and I don't want, I don't want to say this because I don't want you to think that I was like with him based on on oh because he gave me more toys or we went to Disneyland more often with him but it does play I mean it, even though you love him and you identify more with him you know men to men having those things and with my mom we were if I wanted a bicycle we kind of struggle like yeah we have to save a little bit then we'll, you'll get we'll, you'll get your bicycle and with the other guy I'm like I don't know I'm thinking about here you go yeah You're yeah like, whoa yeah. what is this yeah that has an impact it's, it has an impact it, yeah. you can't deny that it would why exactly. wouldn't it exactly so we're um, being honest now we're yeah, being we're honest yeah we're being honest that's okay this is really famous because you are famous but you're real, so oh, that's why I it's thought it really was only famous. because we are really famous. Well, it's <laughs> both, which we are. But it's I mean, both. I love now that now I understand the the. That's what I'm going for. Like I probably I should have told you from the beginning. Sometimes I tell my guests, like honestly, my only yeah. agenda is to get a feel to help listeners get a feel for who you really are. I love it. Like they see you on screen, mm -hmm. they love you. I mean, obviously, Thank they you. see you on stage, they love you. But I want them to see like Definitely. the essence of who you actually are. I love are. it. So love it. that's what I'm shooting for. That's why I love the name, Really Famous. Now I understand everything. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> so now that you're cued in, um, yeah, but I think that's normal too for like even a mother and a son to be really close for years. Yes. And then at a certain <clears throat> age, you know, like it's kind of normal for the boy to feel like a little bit more like he wants that special relationship with his dad. Definitely. So I think that's all at the same time. So yeah. then it was your choice to go and live with him. Yeah, the, the transition was a difficult one <laughs> because how how do you tell your mom your mom when you're 13, 14 that you know what, mom, I, I don't. Think yeah, how I, do you? Yeah, I don't. I don't hear. I don't. I think I'm one. So I think the way I did it, if I remember well, I was like, I'm gonna spend. Is it okay if I spend tonight with my dad? Yeah, sure. So I took some clothes with me, right? And then I took, and then I took, and then suddenly my closet was empty at my mom's so house. So you never had like <laughs> the actual conversation with her that I, I want to live I, with dad? I don't know. I was like, because, because I didn't, maybe I didn't want her to feel sad or yeah. or bad because she, I remember having conversations, awkward conversations when, when she will open up and it's because your dad and your dad. I'm like, I, I don't really want to know these things like he's my dad so i i don't and, and to me he's amazing so i don't know what went on between you guys now of course i process what happened as as a grown-up right and i kind of understand exactly what was going on but back then i'm sure i was i was super confused like what why am i hearing these things what i don't think so no actually i had a great i have a great time with my dad i don't think my dad is that bad like you're painting him to be or something I don't know it was uh, so so it was like a conversation like mom sit down we need to talk yeah yeah <laughs> me 13 years old I want to tell you that this is a serious conversation no it was more like a transition it was like a natural transition and and what happened to your relationship with your mom after that it was good it was it was good but my mom has a very specific personality she's 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 very special and, and very strong and very um, it has to do I think it has to do also with the with the fact that she's Brazilian, 
Brazilians are very passionate. They're extremely passionate. And they see everything with an with a exaggerated amount of passion. And uh, so everything was big. Everything was exaggerated. Every, every, you know, everything was too big. So with, with, you know, so if she's happy, it's my fault. And I'm like, well, not really. Every human being is responsible for his or hers happiness. <laughs> and you figured that out on your own. Exactly, exactly. Right. That's I'm not too easy you. to figure out. It's not. That's why I'm telling you I'm a miracle. Well, we, aren't we all? How did you come <laughs> to be a miracle? I don't know. What's your process? I Were you think, like an analytical No, like I'm going to gonna tell you something why. I Because I really think that uh, my work ethics and how, uh, how I am with my family and as a parent, as a dad, it's so different than how my parents were with me that I think I, I, I'm, I'm sure that I better. I mean, they did well, apparently, because here I am and I don't have, you know, I'm an honorable human being. So so I like to think so. And, uh, and I respect people and I respect my job. And, I, you know, it's just so obviously, obviously they did something right, obviously. But you're but I don't know what. You're a different, and you're a different dad. So, yeah. did you kind of decide to yourself, "I want to be this kind of parent," or like, did you talk? Yeah. To, what's your wife's name? Heidi. Heidi. Did you <laughs> and Heidi talk about like this is what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, or did it just kind of it came naturally? Natural. And so, how is it different what you're doing with them from what your parents did with you? Okay, we're going to do this for five hours. <laughs> this is going to take a long time. We're there gonna we need go, a whole Drake. Do please call my psychiatrist. I'm going to need him after this. No, uh, no. I think that uh, you know, it, you, you know, I, I'm t I will tell you a very easy example, a very superficial example. My dad doesn't know how diapers work, like he just doesn't know how they work. So you're my more dad, involved than he is. Way was. more involved, uh, but all, more hands on. All parents, I yeah. think now, yeah, most totally of the parents, different. yeah, it's so it's a it's a different different generation era, no, a different generation, but uh, things like that, or uh, you know, things like that. It's, uh, so you're more like in the day-to-day -day grind of it. Definitely. Okay. But you're also super busy. Super busy, yeah. But my family is my priority. Always. I have some friends that are like actors or celebrities. And they're like, oh, it's because my, my work and my thing and my promotion. I haven't seen my family for a month. You're like, dude, well, that's your choice. And you know it. So don't pretend that our line of work uh, separates you from your family. Because no, no. You, you can work around it and you can have very specific agendas and schedules for you to, to commit to your job and also be a family man. So you feel like you have control over it? Like it really is in your hands? Like you, you're maybe not now, at the... Maybe now I'm 45. I've been doing this for over 25 years. Uh, I would like to think that I have a, a, a good career, a solid career. I feel very comfortable where I'm at now. You feel stable I feel, and confident. I feel stable. And I think that that helps in your demeanor on, on how you see life. It definitely helps. Maybe if I was younger, I would go like, no, I have to work like 24 seven. There, there's no way I'm not gonna work. I have to make something Right, there's a little life. more desperation yeah, that exactly. maybe drive, would drive you to do things exactly. a little bit differently. Now my desperation has to do with my kids, like always putting food on their table and you know, that's it's a different drive. So do you think about that a lot now? I know because if you, what how this how is the saying goes like you don't you don't think about the price you think about the process of getting there am i making this up right Again, i right? feel like i know what you're talking about but you I know, know exactly you don't think like, about uh, it's in the journey or it's something? the journey exactly, exactly. you don't you don't you don't focus on the on the, the destination the destination you focus on the journey okay yes okay thank you we I knew are I 18. Had it. yes um yes so, so it's most it's more the journey than the than i have to put like it's like if you leave yourself uh, honorable and if you uh if you have like a like a decent journey and you respect yourself and you respect uh, your fellow humans and if you have like a good journey i think karma or the universe or god or whatever will uh, will reward you Okay. And mm -hmm. sometimes it will, it will not reward you. And you have to understand that that's, that's the nature of, of life. You, you know, the wave goes up and down and sometimes you surf and sometimes you have to sit on, on the board and, and wait for the next wave. So like, what are some of the good waves? <laughs> like, what are some of the ups that you would think about in life, in your life that you've- Professional? The waves, at either. Many, any. there are many, many. The professional, the, the job that I did, La Fea Mas Bella, which was a Mexican version of Ugly Betty. Uh, definitely, I'm my career is before and after that project. So that once you landed that role, it like made you a huge star. 
Uh, well, but I didn't Not know. Not once you landed it, once you were in the role. Exactly. Let's be clear. Halfway. Or you almost, made that. Almost half the way into the role. Yeah, we were like, whoa, we're, we're doing something special here, right? And and we did. Like, the last, the last, it was a number one show, the number one scene rated show in Mexico, in the history of Mexican television. Just recently, the last the World Cup, the, the match between Mexico and Germany, beat us for like, Maybe one des one decimal of a of a rating point, so now we're in the second the, and the second. And that's huge. That's huge. Give me a break. It's incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. So when that happened, like that was a big up. It was a wave up. Or it was whatever. a wave. Yeah, was was a, it? Yeah. Oh, how did that feel to be on? It that feels wave? amazing. It also uh, unbalanced me a little bit. Uh, like, oh wow, the world will not turn without me. <laughs> <laughs> like no, dude, it does actually. Yeah, actually, you are in the way. Like move, right? But thank God, I only lasted for a couple of months, and I'm so like, okay, that, this is not good. Okay, so how did that go for a couple of months? Like, how did it only last a couple of months? And what did did you start seeing yourself noticing it, or did somebody else kind of call you? Somebody out? else called me out, but also I was coming from a place where where many people in Mexico were saying and 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 making things up that my dad paid for my career. Or that he has something to do for with my career in a in a financial way, which was complete bullshit. So I was kind of bitter because of all the gossip behind that. So I, I really, I I was proving them wrong every every single day. I was proving them wrong, but it wasn't enough for me. So I felt that I had to like, like rub it like, come on, you say rub it in your face. Yeah, yeah, something. yeah. That's how you say it. Yeah. So, so how did you rub it in people's? No, faces? like 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 not only letting the facts speak for themselves, but like uh, em em emphasizing, like, is it em em emphasizing? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, I don't em know if there's another word you're thinking Emphatizando of. the facts. Yeah. Like even even like uh, decorating the facts even more. Oh, embellishing. Embellishing the facts, exactly. And you don't have to, you know, facts speak for themselves. You don't have to embellish them. <laughs> okay, so, you... so for a couple of months, I was embellishing the facts and people were like, okay, get, come. Your cloud that you're riding right now, get off it. So <laughs> who called you out? Who called friends, you out? Friends, friends, uh, coworkers. Um, actually, it was a, a manager, a well-known manager in Mexico who, who we've been friends for many years. He was like, yeah, we know you had these points of rating. Why don't you tattoo it on your forehead? <laughs> and they're like, Okay, that was hard. So that's but what you're right. Said. Like, huh? Uh huh. Yeah. So it obviously worked. Yeah, but thank God it was only for a couple of months. Like I wasn't an asshole for like seven years. No, yeah, it was just don't a you couple think of that months. Plenty of people once they're in that zone stay in that zone mm -hmm. with themselves. Yeah, they do for like ever or something. And that's that's a big mistake in this in this business because I think they asked Sean Connery once. Like they ask him, hey you know your bond and how do you do this and how it's amazing to be on top and he was like oh no that's the easy part to be on top and and to be wanted by everyone and and <clears throat> you decide which movie to do and which not based on a phone call oh that's the easy one the that, that's the easy part the, the hard part is when nobody wants you when you're sitting on your board waiting for the next wave well of course that's the difficult part in this business on how you deal with that and he's totally right. Of course. And in this business, <clears throat> even if you're on that wave and it's an amazing wave and it's carrying you for a while, it's automatically going to... It's the nature of life. Right. Yeah. So even somebody who is doing so well like you, at some point probably mm -hmm. after that, did you have a point where you're like, oh, great. I'm like, am I going to get the next job? Or no, you pretty much got... I was in a good... I was I was in a good role. Like I was I was working a lot and doing a lot of movies and and theater as well and, and TV projects. So I, I, I was I was very, yeah, I was very like, lucky, very privileged. It seems like you've been, like ever since that happened, you've yes. been continuously. It was thanks to that project. I, I always thank my showrunner, Rosie Ocampo, which I've done four shows with her. I've done four sitcoms. There are sitcoms. In, in Mexico, they label everything as novelas, even if the, if, if, if the technical, even if, if you're doing comedy, they label everything as novelas because you go from Monday to Friday. It's a one hour format. So it's a novela. But we were doing uh, comedic shows. And I did four shows with her, and it was amazing. So those were comedies, and they were five days a week. Uh, five days a week of pure comedy. And I wasn't I wasn't going to do the uh, Ugly Betty, by the way. They called me. I was I was in New York. Uh, the Roths, Daryl and Jordan Roth, decided to. Oh, I know Daryl Roth. I they're, interviewed her. I did a piece on the in the New amazing. York Times they're on her. They're amazing. So they they pulled the plug on the Mambo Kings on the musical, the Broadway show, like thirteen years ago. 
And I was devastated because we did the pre-Broadway show. We did it at the whole Golden Gate Theater in San Francisco and we arrived to New York, but we never got to open the previews and then they pulled the plug. I'm like, oh my God. So then I got the call from from Mexico, from Televisa. Hey, listen, uh, you are our fourth option. They but, told you that? Oh yeah, of course. Would they tell you that here? We are waiting. No, but I'll t- I'll t- about Jane, I'll tell you the story. Uh, they're like, um, <clears throat> you, you're the fourth option. We're waiting for René Strickler to pass or to say yes to the role. It's a 4 p.m., 4 p.m., which is worst time slot in Mexican television, like the worst. 4 p.m. is a remake of a Colombian show, like I'm Ugly Betty and whatever. I'm like, yeah, sure. I mean, I got, I just got unemployed. We're not doing the Mambo Kings anymore. So what, what is uh, the pay? Yeah, you are our fourth choice. Like we are not hiring you. We have to wait for four actors to say no. <laughs> so thank God the other four actors <laughs> said no. That was like the luckiest break for you. Yeah, the and then break. you got to show your stuff. And then right after, is that when Jane the Virgin happened? No, Jane the Virgin no, was. No, big, no, big yeah, yeah, gap. Big, big gap. So big how gap. many years were you on that? Uh, no, that's only in Mexico. That's that's why they're they're labeled as novelas because you don't have seasons. So we we went like for a year and a year and and two or three months. A year and a year and two months, which is a lot. A non-stop. novela usually runs for nonstop. A novela usually runs for maybe six to eight months. So when a novela is really successful, they go to one year. Oh, and then it ends completely. That's ah, it. got it. Yes. So it's one kind it's of one big run. story, one run, and then done. Exactly, exactly. And then they create a new one. Correct. Got well, it. Well, they create a new one. Same character, same <laughs> thing. That they know the the poor girl that fell, fell, falls in love with a rich guy, whatever. But they just they just change professions, and they change setups. Like they might they be, use the formula that works exactly, exactly. Okay, so after that, then when that ended, were you a little nervous because it was? So successful for you? No, no. I was just uh, working a lot, and I and I had uh, projects and another project, and then the movies and and the theater and whatever. So I was I was like working a lot. And you started God. singing at some point. Well, that was way before. Okay. I, I started I I started in the business because I, I thought I wanted to be a singer. So I had albums out and everything, but uh, but then life was like, no, no, no. You, sh- uh, whoever, life, universe was throwing at me like, yeah, do this project, and I got nominated for a Mexican Academy Award. And I'm like, for this movie, for Siete Dias, for seven days. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do the movie because I'm going to have more screen time. And that will help sell my shows. And then another project came along, similar situation, like awards and whatever. So I think that was the universe telling me, no, numb nuts. You, we, I'm telling you to pursue acting. You know? <laughs> right. The signs are all pointing yes, to acting. Yes, the signs are there. And, and some people are very stubborn. They don't, they don't want to see the signs. Or but follow the signs. But I, I don't that. know what happened. Thank God I was wise enough to to see them and And you embraced them. it. Yes. And so let's talk about Rogelio and Rogelio. Jamie. Oh Rogelio. my God. He okay, first of all, I have not been watching it all this time. So I started watching it relatively oh. recently. So there are spoilers that I'm afraid I part of me was like, oh, I really should make sure like there are so many episodes. I knew I didn't have time to watch everything before I mm-hmm. saw you. And I thought I could skip ahead, but then I thought I can't because it's you too can. good. No, it's too good. I didn't want to skip. It's chronological, yeah. but not only that, I could skip ahead so I could be current with you, but then I would lose out on no, all yeah, of this good TV. Yeah, don't, don't be So I decided to save, I was selfish and I saved it for myself. Good, good and choice. I said, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna watch it at my yeah. own pace and I'm not gonna ruin it for good myself. Choice. Good so choice. we're not gonna talk about any spoilers, no. even though you already said one before. But I had already read it. It's ah, okay. Okay, okay. So I read it. It was about right. Michael. Yes. But let's talk about how seriously you are like the fan favorite. I know you're not going to want to acknowledge it, but for sure, I'm going to tell you. But I'm going to tell you, they are like for some for some stories or or some outlets. Petra is a fan favorite. Oh, for example. okay. Yeah, like Petra is is loved. But it's, it's funny because like, she's like the villain, right? Right. But she's loved. She's loved by many people. Of course, Jane. Obviously, obviously. we all. It all falls down from Jane, obviously, but I. But Rogelio is very well written. It's a very well written character. It's very, it's very well balanced. Rogelio could go very wrong on paper, very wrong, and and thank God it goes well because they they write him with a lot of heart and they write him with a with serious scenes like when Jane calls him dad for the first time or when they go through chemo with with so so has breast cancer. Spoiler, <laughs> and um, so those I know I know. 
I know. Well, you, well, I you are. I cannot believe what you just said. Well, to me. you are late to the party, <laughs> so let's just embrace that well, as well. Today, <laughs> today you can start watching any series at any time. So people are gonna. That's what we do now, yeah, I know, right? I know. Because everything is available. But on no, Netflix with Jane, and Amazon Jane, whatever. you have to watch. Is, Jane, remember Twenty Four? That you had to watch like the deep when, when Twenty Four came along. I st we still did the the, the DVD thing. So it wait, was, DVDs? The DVD. Yeah, it's a little thing, so like a disc, like a metal <laughs> disc. I'll explain to you later. We did DVDs, remember? So it's like every hour was the 24 thing. Uh, Wait, Jane, so you watched, then you watched 24 after definitely. it was on then. You weren't watching it as it was actually airing if you're watching no, the DVDs. No, no, because I lived in Mexico. Oh, so we right, didn't have it, we right. didn't, it didn't air yeah. on time. So as soon as the DVD came out, boom, we bought it. But uh, no, Jane is chronological. So if, well, you, yeah. if you skip, if you skip uh, episodes, then people die. And you're like, what the hell happened? Why? Right, a lot happens in like each episode. Oh yeah. But the oh, thing, yeah. what I'm saying is that People are going to pick up Jane the Virgin for the first time and watch it chronologically mm -hmm. for years to come because that's the nature of TV now yes. is that not everybody's watching everything right as it's initially airing mm -hmm. or originally airing or whatever, but people are finding them later and later and they're enjoying them just as much, I agree. but they're binging instead of, uh -huh. you know, once a week or whatever it yeah. is. Yeah. Even people that watch our show, they don't wait for the episode to air on the CW. They, they just wait for the whole season to arrive on Netflix and then they binge watch it. Right. And just to be clear, <laughs> the... Uh, the new season is on the CW. It's on the CW, and I think it'll it'll start in January. In January, okay. Yeah. And so that's season <clears throat> five, five. last. Then the final season. Yes. And how many episodes is that? Like a lot. Eighteen. Yeah, that's like around eighteen each. Eighteen. Each yeah, season, we're gonna right? we're gonna end with a hundred episodes. The oh, are, like even. Yeah. yeah. So that's a lot of episodes too. Yeah. Like when you're saying that you feel like it's your you know your priority is your family, but that's still a lot of episodes you have to it's tape a lot of every episode. year. Yeah, but we have seven principal characters in the show. So the girl that of course works the most is Gina because you know she's Jane, so she probably works 24 seven. But then the other six principal uh, characters, they probably work, we, we use seven days per episode. So sometimes I do work the seven days, but scattered, like a scene here, and then I have like three days of from six in the morning to till eight at night because there's it's all a Rogelio, a Rogelio day. It, it depends, you know, it's, it, it depends. Right. Yeah. So it's seven days per episode. So it's like seven work days, so like business <clears throat> days or whatever. Correct. And then that just keeps going and going and going. But you really. And we have some hiatus, like Christmas hiatus, summer hiatus. But uh, And so it's kind of hard, though, I would imagine, to plan like vacations or whatever, right? Actually, no. Actually, know? no, because they, they give you uh, a very clear schedule. Like, for example, we know now that we're going to have a hiatus starting November, November 10, November 14th till January 10th. So we know we're going to have that hiatus. The tricky part is finding, if, if you want to work during during th that time, it's finding projects that will shoot or will happen precisely during that time lapse. Right, okay. Yeah. But that's so uh, that's so interesting. So there you are, you're working a couple days, you're not working a couple days. How do you learn new lines? Like what happens when you get the lines and you start reading it? How, wh what do you do to like make it yours? We, we read them, uh, well, after four seasons, the character is pretty much in your bones. And so we do we do we do a table read before we start taping that episode, and so we read the ep the, the episode. We know what what the episode is going to be about, of course. Then I don't stress too much about learning the lines because I have a family, so I it's not like oh sorry kids yes I'm shooting this and I'm not available for you, but I'm very lucky because thanks to the novelas in Mexico I've developed uh, a skill to learn lines fast. The same skill that Gina has. And I believe uh, probably Justin has the same the same skills. Uh, but why are you saying they have the same skills? Because you've seen them no, do it. No, because I've seen them do it. Yes, like Gina, for example. The, Gina, for example, the other day uh, at the table read, he she had like a five page monologue, and she nailed the five page monologue at the table read. Like she rehearsed like two days prior to the table read, because because of course the stress and the pressure was there. She needs to learn the five page monologue whenever, regardless of the table read or when she actually shoots that monologue, right? So it was amazing to see her like deliver that five page monologue like at the table read. Very like, impressive. Whoa, very impressive, exactly. But usually we <clears throat> we arrive in the morning whilst we're getting ready, makeup, hair, whatever. We read the scenes three or four or five times. Then we rehearse the scenes. And then, you know, because it's a single camera show, we it's not like a multi-cam. So we have the my over shoulder, your over shoulder, the establishing shot, the blah, 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 blah. So 
after so doing, just for people who don't know what that means. 17 times. Right. So for people who don't know what that means, that yeah. basically means you're going to do the scene with the camera in one spot, and yeah. then there's going to be a, a turnaround. A turnaround. And then which means shot, everybody's going to kind of do it again, exactly. but the camera's going to be in a different place. Again and again and again and again. Right. So it's yeah. repetition, repetition. So if you have a very difficult, if you have a very difficult scene, I will ask my cinematographer or I will ask my director, would you mind starting the scene on Kara side? So my over shoulder to you. Because? Because that way, because you're going to have a, a one optic, then a, a, different, a different optic, whatever. So, and you're probably going to go through the scenes like three, four, five times. And that will give me even more time to repeat and repeat and repeat and even learn the lines. So will you have like the script in front of you or not really no, on pages? No. Never. No, never. So you're still going from your always, brain. Always. Yeah. But the more that you say it, the more it becomes. Exactly. Right. You just, it, you're. Mouth you just learn says it. it kind of. You learn it, exactly. Automatically. Yeah. Okay, so. But not many people have that skill. I'm very lucky. I have that skill. Many people don't. Many people have to study the lines one night before over and over and over. And even like, and even like that, they get to the set and they struggle. Uh, it's not the case on Jane. But I've worked with actors that struggle with, uh, with lines. That's tough to be <clears throat> in that business, I yeah. would think, and not... Uh, not have it come so easily, and not have una memoria. How, how do you say that, that in English? Uh, memory. See, uh, like a, like a retent a retentive memory. Uh huh. It's uh, imagine. It's just... Right, and I guess you could probably build that skill, but if you yeah. have it, it's really something. Yeah. That sticks with but you. But you also build it. You you may not have it. Right, like if you're not. But working then you do for it and while, do it and do it exactly. Uh, yeah. Then that, you get rusty, maybe exactly. almost like a language or exactly. whatever. Exactly. Yeah. So you learn the you learn the lines, you practice, da, 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 and then then that's kind of it. You move on. You forget them. You don't like... I don't forget them. I mean, I. it's not that I, I cannot... I, I don't know the lines from season one to to this day, but I do know kind of like what the scenes were about. All of them. That's and, and I can remember like maybe a phrase or maybe... Yeah. So when you first started playing him, <laughs> like were you, were you a little nervous? Like, is this going to be like you said, he can go wrong on paper? Yeah. Well, I knew that I wanted to do him very extravagant as as he is on paper, which is very full of life and extravagant. But uh, second episode, there's a, a moment where a leopard gets loose. And I'm like, I'm going to jump from the board and I'm going to oh, I'm gonna do all this physical comedy that I love doing. And they might say, bring it down tone a notch. Down. Tone it down, buddy. This is not the way. And they didn't say anything. It worked. So I'm like, yes. So I, I Plus, stayed. you're so likable. Like, you're extravagant. I'm saying you. But he, whatever. I don't know. Some actors like yeah. to say he. Some actors like to say I. I what I do you care. do? I don't care. What do you ha- when you normally talk about it, do you say he or I? I would, I would say Rogelio. I would, I, I would refer to him as Rogelio. Okay. So not you just me. said him. Yeah. You just said exactly, him. Exactly. Um, right. So that's your technique. Yeah. Uh, or not technique, but your preference. So. Yeah. I really don't care, to be honest. Right, right, okay. that's, it's a little pretentious to care about okay. that. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. I got you. So. Um, <laughs> What was my question? I just lost it. Uh, Rogelio. Oh, so Rogelio is so also likable, right? Yeah. So extravagant, but super likable. That is because it's very well written. So you have, and and, and I think that's a thing that, that lives in, within the Jane the Virgin universe, which is we are all very sincere. So it doesn't matter what stupidity is coming out of your mouth. We all believe it. Like we all truly, like we believe it. It's not like, I we're trying to be funny. <laughs> yeah. What, we don't really believe what we're saying. It's just we know that it's, it's going to get a laugh from you guys. So I'm going to play it like that. No, you have that's bull, you have to play it sincerely because because that's your job as an actor is to to, to deliver s- real or sincere emotions to the audience. And if you fake them, then the character it's it's a fake. Right, it, and you really as like as a viewer, <laughs> you really do feel. Of course, of course. You so, feel so all when, these characters, so all Rogel- of them. When Rogelio says like, I I want my daughter to have the pleasure of knowing me. Instead of you going, what a pretentious prick. You're like, oh my God, yes, he's so right. Sweet. His daughter needs to know this beautiful, you're like, how sweet. And he's like, wait, was that sweet? No, that was pret- Wait, so that's that, I don't want to say confusion, but that that sincerity, uh, whenever Jane delivers a ridiculous line or Xiomara or Petra or, or he was, what do you mean he was impaled? We cannot have a second guy impaled at the, at the Marbella. And you're like, what? Did you just say that really? And you're mean it? So... We all say it very sincerely, and that, I think that's that's a trick on Jane. Right. So that just happened, or did that come from somebody, or that just happened? No, I think to... that comes because we work with very good actors. I, I think uh, I think we're very privileged, uh, and uh, I mean, uh, it's they're, they're very good. 
uh, Yael, Justin, Brett, Gina, Andrea, I like all of them. They're, 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 they're amazing actors. So that's why you believe them. I, I think that's a difference with an, with with a between actors. Like if you don't believe the actor, or you watch a movie and you're like, uh, uh-uh. mm-hmm. I don't buy it, buddy. I don't. I don't. That's, so are uh, you when you watch actors, are you kind of automatically thinking like that, or yeah. that just happens? Not automatically, like- but I can I can I can tell when he or she is not having a good time, or doesn't want to be in the on, in that project, or maybe. Yeah. She, yeah. You just say it. She or he should work more on on her or his technique. So, some, what are what are some actors who you it's think like when are you, amazing? It's like when you listen to an interviewer, and you're like, "Man, you could have gone this way. You could have. Done, why didn't you pick up on the thing he or she said? That what was an amazing totally. Thread that's all of conversation. I do. Exactly. So you also pick on that yeah. with your fellow interviewers. You're like, "Oh, you man, you missed it. You had a great opportunity. She was about to tell you something that everybody wanted to know. And just because you concentrated in your freaking cue cards, you missed it. The same. Please, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good example for you to bring up to exactly. me. I get that completely. I'm like, yeah. what? You have to just like, keep letting exactly. him talk. He's exactly. about to like say something it's exactly. so interesting because he's already so interesting. Exactly. Exactly. And don't come in with your other yeah. question or whatever yeah. else or something about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I could see. I mean, I feel like I do that also with actors sometimes, not to the same degree because I'm not an actor, but I know when I'm feeling somebody or not. Like if I'm like, if I might walk out of a movie and be like, there was something about that I just feel like it didn't, Land and I don't know what it was. Maybe <clears throat> was it like, but I, I think I can yeah. sense it too. But that could be a whole bunch of factors, like the narrative, the the, the editing, the the, the direction. Uh, maybe you, I don't know. There's 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 so many things that that put together a project or a movie or a TV series. It's, there's so many things right. that go into play. Not not not. I'm, I'm saying not only the actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only oh wow, the actor was unbelievable. It's like ah. Uh, Wow, the story resolved itself so fast. I, I wanted to cry more in this moment. I wanted to feel more in this moment. Then suddenly, whoop, it was resolved. What what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's talk about actors who you look up to, who you really like, mm-hmm. that you've seen. Who are some of your favorites? I know it's hard to really. It's so it hard down. because there are so many. Uh, but uh, let me think. This guy, amazing, amazing, who did uh, Dominic Cooper. Dominic Cooper. He's an amazing, amazing, amazing actor. He did the 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 Saddam, Saddam Hussein's son. Remember, uh, the poster was him dressed all in gold. Um, but Dominic Cooper, he's amazing. Okay. Uh, the guy that is now playing uh, Freddie Mercury, ba- Balik Bialik. What what's his last Rami. name? Eh? Rami. Rami. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He is uh, truly, truly amazing. And uh, I mean, there are so many. Yeah. There are so many actors that I that I love uh, what they do. Uh, Billy Curtip, am I pronouncing? Yeah, it? yeah, C- Curtip or Curtip? Curtip, I think. Crudup. But you tell Billy me, Crudup. is that how he pronounces it? Curtip or Curtip? Yeah, one or the other. Yeah, we'll look that up. But can you look that up? I think they're amazing. I mean, of course, you have the classics, for all the uh, Pacino, yeah, the, the classics, or whatever, the Daniel Day Lewis. I mean, yeah, they, of yeah. course, they, they're amazing, right? But uh, but I like more a little more this like guys, like current modern, uh, what people are doing today. <laughs> I think so. Okay, yeah. even though you're not catching much TV because you're super busy. Exactly. All right, so let's talk about something that we were talking about we, that I said that I brought up again later. When you first came in mm-hmm. and I was sitting here in the beautiful studio that we were mentioning uh, That Ray Jimenez owns, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And you, I think you gave, you said, you gave me one kiss and you uh, said, we kiss. This yeah, is we, what I was. I have to tell you before, we kiss. No, because you, you know what I've, uh, uh, it's a very like a Mexican thing to do and Europeans kiss twice. But in Mexico, we say hi and we kiss on the cheek, on the cheek. But I've noticed here in the States, they don't. So they do very awkward movements. I'm, I'm going to show you. Like, if we're going to, I'm, I'm going to be from America and you're going to be from Mexico, right? Okay. And you want to kiss. When so I'm going to come in to kiss Just, you. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Americans go, go, go like this because they don't know how to react. It's like, hi, how are you? Wait, am I, am I shaking gonna kiss your me, hand? Yes. We shake and we kiss. So One. you shake and kiss? We shake and kiss. And so I'm, gonna I'm be, reaching out to your hand and, and I'm going to be American and you're going to be Mexican. So you're going to go directly for the kiss, right? Oh, but also the shake. And also the shake. Okay. And I'm going to tell you how Americans react in my experience. So, some okay, of them. okay, let's go. do this. Oh. 
was so weird. So yes, what you did. Yes. For anybody it's the weirdest thing in the world because he's like, he's like. Right, so I'm, I'm like, just going to explain that because this is an audio podcast, even though we have a film this yeah. time, that you basically, as the American, ducked your head like Duck in a weird. In a weird way or move. Or he's like, wait, 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 wait. Am I supposed to hug you or kiss you? But uh, what, what is this? Is, uh, this is something strange that's happening to me. He's like, it's not that strange. It's just. That's so has that always been or is that just since like the Me Too movement? No, it has always out. been. That has always been. That has always been. Yeah. So it's just Americans are awkward greeters. And I don't know. Maybe, no, maybe they're just like to shake hands. But we come from a culture where, they, where we shake and kiss. Like the Spaniards come and they shake and kiss twice. Uh, or the French, for example. But we just shake and kiss once. Right. And then you have people who do the air kisses, though, right? No. Not that many. I do. No, no. I know somebody who did the air kiss, who uh, does well, the you, air kiss. You, were, you hang out with very pretentious people then. <laughs> it's Tim Gunn. Yes. You hang out with Do you know Tim with... Gunn from Project Runway? That's what he does. No. Oh, you don't know him? Oh, he's amazing. Maybe he's an I awesome do. guy. Wait, I think I... He, I think from I... Project Runway, he's the host and mentor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got with, it, got it, got it. You know, it, like yeah. the white hair and glasses. Yeah, yeah. But I think I met him... Very uh, sharply dressed. I have met him at, at, at private settings with Eva Longoria. I think so. I feel like you would have met him yeah, at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's his kiss is really? he does like the double air. One oh, wow. on one, ch- one, one the side of one Ooh, cheek that's and the so, side of the other that's cheek. That's so New York Fashion Week, right? Well, he of... is New York Fashion I Week, I love it. Guess. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, But since, also we started talking about so with the kiss and everything. So since everything's get, gotten more sensitive Of course. Now, yeah. So, because well, there are very awkward people out there and they are very obnoxious people that think they're funny and they're not funny and it's like don't, don't be disrespectful like don't that's not funny so like the difference would be i think you gave an example before mm. like you might say something like um, wow you how, how are you you look amazing today right or you look which amazing is perfectly fine today. it's like ugh, yucky Right, but when you do it, but when you do it, because you're so good at it, it's, like it's, like, hey, it's actually oh, very interesting. I love your hair. You start to your hair. Oh, you look amazing. You keep walking. You just, you, you don't make it. A, you don't make it a thing. But people think that they make it a thing, and because they actually probably thinking about taking it somewhere else and someplace else, and you're you shouldn't. Right. So people are a little <laughs> bit more uh, like wary of that now. I don't know. I. I, I I don't know. I don't. I'm. I'm. I don't know. I, I. I do know that we have had like three years now or two years in a row this uh, sexual harassment uh, conversation with the head of departments of Jane and of course a cast is invited, but we don't really have to attend. But you were invited if you want to go and and yeah. I, but which I'm listen. I am all pro for that because I have a beautiful daughter and I love my wife and I'm a feminist and and if uh, girls and guys are being uh, abused by people in power that's that's horrible that, that shouldn't happen mm-hmm. do you want to talk about politics or no if you want to <laughs> i don't know if i want to be accurate but uh you want to talk about the kavanaugh the kavanaugh hearing hearing that's what's up with oh, totally so, optional no so pressure to talk about it no it's very strange it's very strange because i think what's what's on the line is that that he lied on the road right and he did apparently but then some friends are said say no, and then some friends say yes. But I, as an actor, that I study people's way, people's demeanor. Is that how you say it? Like, like the the yeah yeah. I could see that 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 his response was like, you know, I'm going to tell you something. He was very defensive, like defensive and aggressive. Very defensive and aggressive. And I think that in Mexico we say that if you have nothing, if you have nothing to fear, you have nothing to hide. So you know what it is. El que na, nada, nada teme. Na, yeah, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear, I believe. Nada debe el que nada teme. Uh-huh. You don't, if you don't fear nothing, then you don't owe nothing. Like, it's, it's like a, see, exactly. You have nothing to, f- so. So you are looking at the vibe too. Like you're kind of yeah, sensing definitely. the human, yeah. whatever you're picking up on that you think about when you're, yeah. as just as an actor in exactly. general. Exactly. Um, That's why they recommend politicians to take acting classes. That, that is why uh, Re- Reagan was such a good president because he was a, a, an actor. So so he knew exactly how to play the, play an audience, right? Wait, do they t- tell politicians? <clears throat> they suggest to They suggest politicians to take, classes? oh, definitely, yes, yes. It's part on it's part of their preparation. Uh, all politicians, really or at disturbing. least, or at least take uh, no, because you're thinking act actors as you are uh, deceiving me, right? Right, and no, like I don't, I don't see, I don't think Jane the Virgin is is a deceitful character. No, it's no. So you're thinking about the 
oh yeah, the Ocean Eleven. You wanna you wanna rob a bank and you're, you're lying to me. So not not all not all uh, parts are like that from an actor. An actor just needs to needs to be believable. Our job is to is is to present ourselves on, on a set and be as believable as possible for people to buy our character, whatever that character is. A con artist, a, a, a cancer patient. I mean, whatever that, that character is. Right. So you're saying that it comes from a real place, but you Definitely. can make right. So for a politician with an acting background or class or whatever, Imagine, they can be genuine and, and ma- even communicate more, more convincing. Exactly. They right. could be genuine, okay, and I they could be yeah. even more convincing. They could be, and they can relay their message even more effective than 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 uh, let's say, which we all I think we all love better or work. No, I think we all love him. Or Wait, we all love who? Better or work? The oh, Texan. Yes. That is going against a very likable Ted Cruz. Yes. <laughs> um, so I think uh, Beto is that kind of a guy. He's like, he's yes. like, he's a very, uh, he's very genuine, and he really knows how to relay a message because he used to be in a fucking rock band. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, right. So it's really a communication issue. It's a communication right. issue. Right. Yeah. Okay. I got. I get that. <laughs> What are some of the hardest things that you've learned in life? Some of your biggest like life lessons that people don't don't have your same morals or your or your same ethics. There are way more people that will try to take advantage of you and they will con you than people uh, with than ethical people. That's 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 that, like not many people um, act like you would in a situation uh, with morals with ethics. You know. The, not many, not many people would will do the right thing to do. How did you learn the, that? The majority. By why do you think that? By uh, by having personal experiences with people that you think they're gonna act a certain way, and then they surprise you, and you're like, "Wow, I never saw that coming." Uh, it's incredible how good you are of a con man. It's incredible. So, right. So maybe at the beginning you are more likely in the beginning of your life, say, to give people the benefit of the doubt. Uh-huh. And be optimistic about how they might be, and yeah. then over time, people have just shown you that they're not they're necessarily, true colors. yeah, exactly. And you think that's the, the, sort of the majority. Yes, More. definitely. Definitely. Yeah, there are very, there are very few good people, a few good men. That's a great title of a movie because it is actually true. That's interesting. Yeah, there are only a few good people. I think so. How small? How small? Yeah, very small. Very small. Yeah, but we tend to gravitate towards each other. <laughs> And you seem like an optimistic person to me. I would like to think so, yeah. So for you to feel but I, like... But I, but I don't lose reality. I don't lose sight of reality. I'm, I'm Right, like you seem to have both, mm-hmm. right? Like despite the fact that you feel like there are fewer good people, way fewer. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah, way fewer good people than people who may be, I don't even want to say bad, but the opposite, let's yeah. say. Um, but you're still... An optimist, or am I putting that no, on no, you? No, no, that's, really that's totally accurate. That's not totally accurate. Yeah. So, wh- why do you think you're an optimist? Is that just your nature? That's just my nature, and I, that's that's why I want to teach to my kids. And even though I want to teach them to be cautious and and have precautions in life, I also want them not to be assholes. Like I don't trust anyone, and and everybody's gonna take advantage of me. No, it's like be positive in life, but also take care of yourself. But you know, it's like it's a very tricky balance but I think you can you can achieve it so did it devastate you when you figured out that a thing? little bit yes and it, it devastated me the, the more when when it happened with people that I know with people that I know that I'm like for the love of God listen w- let's say I'm doing business with a with a company that is <laughs> Ray's gonna laugh at, the, at this one let's say I'm doing business with a company of that is uh, that was created by, by four guys <laughs> and let's say two of them are complete assholes. Complete assholes. Like, what the f- like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? You, and then two of them are very nice. You're like, well, listen, don't worry, because even though I, I'm having um, like communication issues or problems with these two guys of the four partners, I'm sure these other two partners I'm, are gonna step up to the plate and they're gonna act nicely, and they're gonna act with morals and they're gonna act with ethics, and then they don't, and you're like, shit, wow. And that's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call, and it's devastating because you like these people. You you think you like these people. You think you have a friendship with this with this with these people, and and you and you might have, but they don't. They so sh- why they don't, don't they? Like, what's the problem? If you they are presented no themselves in that way, then why do you think that I have they, no idea? 
I have no idea. I, I have you tried to figure that out? No, because it's going it's going into our it's 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 going into a rabbit hole that it's like I rather just concentrate. I have enough on my plate to concentrate on me. Like I rather be a good person. I rather behave myself with morals, with ethics. I rather just care about me than how other people are. I mean, I'm not their parents. I'm not. Yeah, but it's frustrating when you are fr- treating them a certain way Definitely. and they're not giving that back it to you. It is extremely frustrating. It's, devast- it is frustrating. it's sad. You feel betrayed. It's it's horrible. It's fucking horrible. But, but you cannot let that define you. You just can't. You, you have to be resilient and you have to move on and understand that life goes on. And, and but, but I think you get in, in trouble when you start losing your essence as a human being. Like, oh, oh. So I have to be a con artist then, too. Of course, I get it. Okay, well, fuck everybody. Then I'm going to be this way. No, it's like, no. I really believe that I'm on the right track. So I will continue to be. Even though everyone around me, or not, not everyone around me, but, uh, many people, the majority they're still going to be the way that they are. But exactly. I'm going to take the but higher that shouldn't ground. Define you. Right. I'm going to take the higher ground. I'm going to do what I know this is right. Definitely. And I'm going to keep living the way that I live. Definitely. Because I think that, that and try that's, not to get disappointed. That's a bigger payoff. I'm, that, that's a bigger payoff uh, as, a, as as a karma, as a human, as as how your kids see how you, uh, you know, confront certain situations. I think. I think. It's, I think it's it's a. Uh, it, it's 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 on you. It, it, I want them to be on them. I want mm-hmm. the stupidity to be on them, not not on me. Right, right. And is it worse in the entertainment industry? No, I think it's 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 everywhere. everywhere. I think it's everywhere. The entertainment business has this thing that many many people think that they're like, oh, like, and it's like no, it's just it's just a job, just a job that has a lot of public recognition. But don't get lost on that because it's just a job. You're getting paid to play. To, you're getting paid to play pretend. You're not curing cancer, so chill out. Right, right. But I think that's a good perspective that not everybody is able to have. Not everybody. No, no, no. Right, and, because and, especially and when you people have, are telling you them have things. interviewed people that come here to the room and they walk like, "Hi, Kara. You are about to interview God." And you're like, <laughs> "No, not really." But, but, but sit your ass down and let, let's see how this goes. <laughs> to me, everybody is a real person. Thanks. And there's an interesting person inside of everybody's of brain and personality and whatever. Or they, they're, or they might not be. Or they were like, wow, the hype about you is way too much. You are a horrible person. It's incredible. I'm glad I got to meet you because you are just horrible. So the hype was all bullshit. So, yeah. No, I would never say that about anybody that I've ever met. Yes, <laughs> I would love to hear your secret tapes. <laughs> but it is interesting, though. I think human nature and like the more that you see and do and have relationships with people, the more that you really start to see patterns and realize Definitely. what the reality is. Yep. And it's not always easy to just push forward and do the right thing, but it sounds like you're doing it. I think so. I like to think so, yeah. All right, so let's end with a round of quick answer. Let's do it. Questions. Yes. You ready? Yes, because I have to pick up my daughter from school. Oh. 123. <laughs> At 123, you have to but pick up? But we're good. She, she's very close. Okay, because no it's 105. We're like 10 minutes away. Okay, okay. Ready? Yeah, ready. The, no. Just one word or the first thing that comes to my mind? To my mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, first thing that comes to your okay, mind. Okay, cool. So it's like, it's almost like free association, but not really, because it's not just one word. Answer it. Okay, But cool. don't think too hard about it. Okay, you got it. What's the weirdest thing about playing Rogelio on Jane the Virgin? <laughs> Wearing lavender all the time. <laughs> Which acting role do you wish that you got and didn't? Uh, Sweeney Todd. If you could be a guest actor on any current television show, which would you choose? I don't watch television, but I would love to be a demon in the new Charmed. What's in your fridge? The ju- juices, press juices. What do you do on Sunday mornings? Sunday mornings, we wake up late when my kids allow me and we try to go on the boat. What is your weirdest habit? My weirdest habit. Oh my God, there's so many because I have OCD. Um, uh, my weirdest habit. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, I don't know. Uh Oh, oh! I leave like islands of things, like I like on our on our, on our dining ta- dining room table. I leave like islands of this is here, this is here, the, and there. What they're, are these islands of? They're all very well, like my motorcycle stuff, my checkbook and things that I need to pay, uh, whatever my things, my, my caps, and my wife goes like, dude. You have a fucking closet. What is wrong with you? But I just like I like I like to leave islands around. So you have display everything on display. Yes. 
<laughs> cats or dogs? Uh, dogs. A thousand. Cats aren't even a question. Dogs. Do you have one? Yes. What kind? A chihuahua. What's his or her name? Mila. And <coughs> what's a personal pet peeve you have? Do you know what I mean by pet peeve? Like something that like disturbs you. It disturbs it. me. Um, uh, people not being punctual. Are you always punctual? Yes. What's one time when you were late for something and you couldn't take it? Never. Never? <laughs> Never. You're close to perfect. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> What's your imperfection? My imperfection, many. Such many. as? Many. I, I have a very strong personality sometimes. I should I should chill out when, when people are not punctual. It's, it's, it's not the end of the world. Like, chill the fuck out. Everything's fine, right? So I, I shouldn't take things uh, so... I shouldn't think... I, tr- I shouldn't take things so personal. What is the cutest thing about your daughter? Everything. What's the cutest thing about your son? Absolutely everything. If you could pick two celebrities to be your parents, who would you choose? They're of the Lord. I don't know. Uh, oh, my God. Shirley MacLaine. And? She's fun. She's fun. And uh, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm just going to say this name just to say it. Michael Gain. Okay. <laughs> What's What are you currently obsessed with? Why am I currently obsessed with? Uh, well, I've been I've been for a while, but I'm I'm a, I'm a sneakerhead. I love sneakers. What's your favorite pair? My favorite pair are the John Sachs, the the Mar- Mars Project from John Sachs. Okay, and what do people when people think of you and they <clears throat> what do they assume? What's the image you think that they have of you? Who do they think you are? In the states, I have no idea. In Mexico. Uh, that is that's no longer the case uh thank god but at the beginning of my career was this thing that oh of course because his dad has to do with his success because his dad has money and that drove me crazy crazy because my dad almost kicked me out of the house when i told him i want to i want to pursue acting like because my mom was a singer and i got it through the umbilical cord right so my dad was like no no you should be a businessman what do you mean an artist no like do like a serious career and i'm like no no i'm 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 cool i'm cool with this uh yeah but i lost my what was it? So I was asking you what people think, the image oh, of you. Oh, I don't know. In the States, I don't know. I think the States is way more genuine because there are no preconceptions about my past. So I think that whenever I meet people in here in the U.S., they're so genuine and so nice and so uh, happy because they love Rogelio. And when I host things or when I do like Broadway or, or musical theater, they just uh, embrace me with, with uh, without any prejudice. And I love that. Do you get recognized a lot? Yeah. Now, yes. Like all the time? I mean, no, no, no. like you're walking down the street, uh, and yeah, well, yeah, well, so do you well feel yeah, like yeah, are definitely. Watching you all the time. No, for, from any people that speak Spanish, yeah, for sure. And now the mainstream market, every every day, more and more and more, because they love Jane the Virgin, they like the show, and yeah, they, they follow. So I'm going to tell you something—a weird thing that happened to me yesterday morning. I'm at the airport waiting to get on the plane from New York to LA, and there is a. Um, Jack Nicholson lookalike. Oh my God! Getting on the plane, and he and he works as a Jack Nicholson lookalike. That's his job. As, that's his job. He gets paid. I know the, the big I know the Bono one. Oh really? There, there's a Bono one, a Bono lookalike. Yeah. And so he gets paid to go to these things. I All guess right. right. You're Bono guy, and so does this guy. He gets paid to, but he looks like Jack Nicholson. He's sitting at the airport, and I'm watching. It is so interesting. Come, be, I'm behind him, and I could see everybody watching him. People are walking by, just like pretending they're not seeing him. Uh-huh. But it's an interesting thing to yeah, see is. what celebrities must go through. Yeah, it's a difficult one. Like bird's eye view. So you're just mm-hmm. walking through, or you're going to Starbucks or something. Yeah. And do you feel like people are seeing you out of their corner? Sometimes, but uh, I, I guess I think that the American fans are a little bit more, more, you know, restricted. They, they don't like, like they're just like, you know, mm. Latino. My, my peeps are more passionate. They just go for it. Picture, whatever. Hug me. Hey, family, come picture. You're like, oh, wait, wait. I'm changing a diaper. I, I can't right now. It's not a good time, you know. <laughs> and who are you really? Who is the essential Jaime Camille? This one. Me? T- describe yourself. Um, just normal, normal. I love my job. I love my family. I love what I do. I love getting on set every morning. I, I, I am very thankful about life and about things. And I'm just very genuine. I think I'm very genuine. So whenever you, when you meet me, that's you. That's that's it. That's there's no like. Oh, I wonder what's gonna happen after nothing. Nothing's gonna happen. It's, this, this is it. You see what you know. What you what, see, what, you see what you get. Exactly. Exactly. You told me what it was this time. <laughs> Hi, May. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kara. Thank this you so much. This was fun. And thanks was for fun. being authentic, genuine, Always. and real. Thank you. For really famous, because that's the goal. And because we are really famous people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>